So what causes keratoconus? Well, as with many conditions, it's a combination of genetic factors and environmental factors. So we know that there are some families where keratoconus is really quite common. And I have quite a few families in Yorkshire where I look after siblings and cousins. And these people have been kind enough to provide us with little blood samples. And the team there have been studying the genetics of these families. And we've identified several genes that are involved in increasing the risk of developing keratoconus. But it isn't a simple cause and effect like some genetic disorders. So we know that there are some genes that predispose people to developing keratoconus. But perhaps bizarrely, it seems that environmental factors can trigger it. And the main factor seems to be eye rubbing, which whenever I talk about it to patients, it sounds a bit silly to me. But there is a clear, consistent pattern, and it's reported in a lot of papers. And the common factors appear to be severe allergy, eczema, very bad hay fever, conditions which understandably cause young people to, to really rub their eyes very vigorously. Interestingly, some patients with learning difficulties, so patients with Down syndrome, for example, we often find that they like the visual stimulation. They're called phosphenes. I don't know if you ever tried just rubbing your eye like that and you'll see a, a dark shape appear. And some children get to like the appearance of the phosphenes and will rub their eyes as a result. So we have patients with allergy, we have patients sometimes with learning difficulties, both of whom like rubbing their eyes. And that seems to be the final common path that can trigger abnormal behavior in the cornea. So that the cornea, the window at the front of the eye starts to become a little bit thinner, a little bit weaker and that change can in some patients accelerate away. And so the first thing we do when we meet a patient with a diagnosis of keratoconus for the first time is to talk to them about this and to talk to them about not rubbing their eyes. Now it's all very well nagging people and saying, well, don't, don't rub your eyes. But um, a key part of that is to make sure that any allergy, hay fever, eczema that they may have is being really well managed. I think if I had terribly itchy eyes, it wouldn't matter if I'd been told, you, you really want to rub them. But if we can really get on top of that, make sure that their eyes feel lovely, then they can not rub their eyes. And, and it does appear that if we can achieve that, then we reduce the chances of those eyes uh, progressing to advanced keratoconus.